So I wrote this book, Unashamed. It's a memoir. A lot of people were like, why are you writing a memoir so early? You you know, you're still in the process. But um, one is just, man, it's, it was important to me to put something in print, to tell the story as I remember it. What if Jimi Hendrix wrote a memoir? What if Prince had written a memoir? They were still, you know, young. What if, you know, Janis Joplin or any of them have written something, you know, even if it wasn't the full story. So I wanted to make sure I got something down for not only just for the, the fans and the people who weren't fans, but also for my own kids and the whole nine. The story is important because every everybody who loves hip hop can relate to a lot of this story of specifically being raised by surrogate fathers in hip hop culture. You know, so I talk a lot about how Tupac was like a surrogate father to me because he could talk about things that I could relate to. You know, we both experienced fatherlessness. We both experienced kind of socially conscious moms who were driving us to think. We both experienced being artistic, but having that artistic quality being smothered by the influence of the community and just gangsterism in the whole nine. And so I'm just talking about that wrestle and talking about also, what it's like to be a new artist in this era as well. I'm not necessarily a new artist, but in some of the streams of culture that I've, I'm navigating through, you know, no one really talks to you about what it's like to first go to the Rock Nation party, what it's like to first run into Kanye. What do they think about you the first time you meet them? So I talk a lot about that. You know, I got a story here, me on the red carpet going to get a Grammy and still got stiff armed. You know what I mean? Like I got stiffed on by security. I'm literally walking the red carpet. I got my nice suit on. My wife got her heels on, hair done. It's hot. You know, we walking the red carpet to go do the interviews and I get stiff armed like, hold up, little bro, you got to wait. And I'm like, what? what's going on? They like, Taylor Swift has to go first. And I'm like, of course, shake it off. That's It's all good, you know, no big deal. But then it just keeps happening. It's like Taylor, then it's like Keith Urban, then it's like Rick Ross. I had to wait till like Ziggy Marley's nephew's dog came through the thing, you know what I mean? So it's just that whole, what is that like to wrestle with, with that, with all of that particular world? And it's just me navigating through, through, you know, all those particular different stories in the book. I think reading is crucial. You know, they told me a long time ago that they hide everything they don't want you to know inside of books. I think reading is, is crucial for us, especially like uh, just, you know, millennials who are trying to find a place in this world. Their identities wrapped up in how many followers they got on social media. Man, all Twitter has to do is cancel Twitter altogether. And then now you down to zero. But nobody can take the knowledge that you've acquired from from reading and expanding your mind and expanding, you know, your, your your perspective and your paradigm. It's just crucial to learn. You know, you could read this book, you could download it, you could listen, I'll give it to you audio, you know what I mean? But make sure you are consuming worthwhile information that is that's that's broadening your horizons. You should be growing as a person. Your horizon should be broadening. You should be taking in beautiful things and regurgitating that out into the world and making, you know, the world a reflection of the beauty that you're taking in and the knowledge that you're taking in. And so, you know, if they could build pyramids, what could we do? You know, if, if historically pyramids were built, it's 2016, 2017, what can we do now? Where's today's average, you know, 25 to 40 year old? Where are they in, in the mix? Are they thinking that they're individualized to the point where they're trying to impress a younger demographic? Or are they trying to actually aspire to being an old, you know, an old head? Don't be a coward and say, no, I'm not. I'm different from everybody else. No, you're a role model. You are. And I'm in this game because I feel like we need to demand more accountability from our artists. Good art should comfort the disturbed and disturb the comfortable. When I thought about um, like what I want to do in music is I want to create meaningful conversations, you know, inside of hip hop, because I feel like, again, we live in a very like trivial kind of culture. We're still making the same music, the same movies, at what point do we wake up? And I'm not sitting here being judgmental because I'm still trying to wake up.